Hello, lovelies. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing all right. Um, I had a real nice thing happen a few months ago. This fellow, um, Michael Palmasano, I believe is how you pronounce his name, the guitar guy, he kind of reacts to videos. And somebody had suggested um, Sideways as a song that he have a reaction to. And um, it was beautiful to watch his honest reaction to that song. I, I um, he had a lot of very kind things to say, um, and I saw um, I saw a look on his face when the line um, "I have days which his nose above the water, keep it together while I fall apart," and I have moments when I act just like my father the only man who ever broke my heart and I watched his face it was really beautiful uh, he has a lot of followers on YouTube um, a bunch and I don't think he put me on his normal thing it was like a side deal I don't understand but uh, but he didn't put he didn't he did not put my song on his main uh, review thing that he does but he did like a little weekend thing or something anyway my inbox started blowing up and a bunch of people uh, have been commenting and um, so I've been answering every one of them um, trying to at least um, telling people thank you you know liking it or whatever Cause I, YouTube for me was like the, the final frontier I just I never paid too much attention to it. I spent a lot of time on Facebook and some time on Twitter. Um, and YouTube was um, was probably a mistake, but I didn't spend a lot of time on my YouTube channel. So anyway, I decided that I was going to <clears throat> take a little uh, more time to answer things on YouTube. So especially since I've just about completely giving up on Facebook. Um, no reason going into all that. But anyway, um, one of the comments from one of the people said they would love to hear the story of how Sideways happened. And I thought, okay. So, I'll, but I figured uh, rather uh, before I put it on my YouTube channel that I would give it to my patrons first because I've not made a um, a video for the patrons in a, in a hot minute. I have been uh, going through a, a few things. I'm not even going to go into it. I'm sick of talking about it all. But anyway, I have um, not been on in a while, so I figured I would take a minute to to come and. Uh, and uh, share some love with you. So, sideways, my wife and I went to the Shack Up Inn in Clarksdale, Mississippi, to spend a, a long weekend and just get away and have some time to ourselves. And she did dirty cross stitching. Um, and I played guitar. I took three or four different guitars and um, all day, every day, just sit there and play and see what would happen. On that trip, um, I got little pieces of parts of different songs, but but um, in particular, I wrote um, "Sideways" and "Doing All Right" for a guy like me. I wrote those basically on the same day, which is odd for me because I don't I I don't normally write at least the guts of uh, of two songs in a day I, I toil and labor over every word so the fact that i got a couple was remarkable to me but sideways i had been playing with a an open g tuning um long time ago in a land far away i learned that tuning and um and i had uh, i used it everywhere for the longest time and then over time because I would always have to carry another guitar so I just kind of let it go to the wayside and while I was getting ready to make the record for a cigarette 
I wanted some new sounds, some new experiences. So I brought the OPG tuning out, and so that's and it, it just make it makes me sing different. It makes me approach music different. It brings out the uh, the blues in my voice, that and and the way that it, it plays. It just it just makes me react to it a certain way, and um, and I wanted some of that on my record. So that's kind of uh, you know the, that that one three um, four thing that I was doing. I do need to go back uh, for just a second. I about once a month I was going down to Opelousas, Louisiana, to speak to youth at a treatment center. Beautiful people down there, and for a short while maybe five or six times, I would go down there and I would play music and speak to the to the uh, kids down there. These kids were uh, amazing. It was a tough gig because um, these are all kids that were trouble kids, addicted to something, and some of them were probably like, well, you can go to rehab or you can go to detention center, you know? But they, I never had any problems down there. It was a tough gig because they find it difficult to express themselves. So you, and and you know you just kind of sit in a room with fifteen or twenty kids and they're staring at you. It's a little intimidating. It was probably one of the harder performance gigs I've ever had. I, and maybe that was because I was having flashbacks of when I was a youth pastor way back in the day. And the kids are just always a tough audience. But Anyway, um, on one of those trips, I um, I said something, and I don't remember what it was, but I remember what happened next because one of the kids, um, oh, I remember what it was. I said, you know, I've sang these songs about my life, and I've talked about my addiction and my recovery and the way that, that I used songs to kind of help dig myself out of a hole that I had dug for myself. But these are my stories, these are my songs. If we were going to write your song, what would that look like? And there was a long pause, and then I couldn't believe it. A hand popped up, and I'm like, yeah, they bet. So, and this girl began to share a story. I almost wish she hadn't, because it was rough to hear. And she said it in front of God and everybody and all the kids in there, but all of their stories, every one of them had a story. And they were all hard. That's why they were in there, you know, killing themselves with drugs and alcohol because they had all been through a lot. Um, I said a little bit of something back, you know, to her. It was one of those instances where you know, what are you going to say? And one of the counselors that was there, uh, he said, if I could, and I said, yes, please. And um, and he interjected. And in the middle of while he was saying what he was saying to address this situation that the young lady had mentioned, he said, we have to be careful because if you, if you push it down, it comes out sideways. Man, it was like a two-by-four. And I thought about all of the years that I had pushed it down and pushed it down and pushed it down and it came out sideways. That same trip, and and if you're a songwriter or a writer of any kind, maybe maybe you can relate to this, but, but I have an idea file, you know. And any time that I hear something, oh, that'd be a good song, I file it away. And when I'm really serious about it, I make a note on my phone. But I put that in the idea file and chewed on it for months and months and months because I knew it was too important of a thought to just kind of casually write. And I had made up my mind that I wanted to write it by myself because I felt like any outside influence might change the power of the song and it was too good of an idea for me to give away to anybody else. That same day at the treatment center, I was talking to another one of my friends there that was a counselor. And he told me this story, and the story's not important, but uh, but he 
said that he had almost gotten in an argument with his neighbor and a side of him came out that surprised him. It was a almost violent side. And he, but then he began to explain to me, well, I need to back up is what he said. Um, my back hurt and when I get, and it scared me. And when I get afraid, it makes me mad. And when he said that, that went in the idea file because I had never really, it was really a, a big moment in my life because I had never looked at fear as being a trigger for my anger. These days I almost never get mad because it takes too much energy to get mad. But boy, in my younger days, you know, I, I could get mad easy and fear has always been a huge problem for me. So I put that in the file as well. So um, now you take that information and you fast forward to the shack up in. And I'm sitting there playing this groove, you know, that one. I don't have, oh, I'd probably be dumb anyway, but playing that one, three, four progression. And, uh, and these words start coming out. And push it down, it comes out sideways. Push it down. And I remember that bit of roads turned into highways. I wasn't sure if that made sense. I had to play that game with myself. Like, is this a sentence? Would you say this to somebody? Bit of roads turn into highways. What does that even mean? And the more that I thought about it, the more I went, that's exactly what happens, you know? They start off as little footpaths, a little deer trail. You know, you just kind of, before too long, you could run a motocross through it, uh, you know, a four-wheeler, <laughs> and then start off as a horse trail, a deer trail. Um, and then the next thing you know, you're laying pavement, and you got a full-blown four-lane on there. So, and the, I wrote that whole thing in the, uh, and uh, two or three hours, which never happens. And there was just a couple of lines. I, a, lot of, a lot of times I will get in the middle of a song and I don't know if it's any good or not or if it's right because I'm too far into it. So I made a deal with myself. I do it all the time. I need to just get away from it, step away from it, and I'll come back and look at it again which is hard to do because you're emotionally connected to this idea now and you want to, you know, you want to you want to finish it. But I felt like something was not quite right, but I didn't know what it was. And to be honest with you, I don't remember what the line was, but I only, when I came back, I only fixed two lines. And it was the, the lines I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The, um, have days where it's just nose above the water. I think that line was there. And then the next one, um, keep it together while I fall apart. That was, I put that, I changed that to put me to that. And then I have moments when I just like my father, the only man who ever broke my heart. And when I wrote that, I knew that was it. And uh, the song was finished. So, I should probably, let me see if I can find this real quick. This is a terrible time to be doing this, but um, see if I can go back real quick. Um, see if I can find this. No, I can't. I can't. I was going to say the guy's name. Maybe I'll mention it. Maybe I'll mention it uh, when I do the write-up. Um, I'm there now. Uh, Invictus 216. Thanks for asking. There's your story. And to all my faithful patrons that uh, have stuck with me, um, through this very trying and challenging time for the sake of, for those that may not know, I had a back surgery 
and they didn't work on my back they worked on my neck and caused some nerve damage so uh, it's impaired my speech so it's been a real struggle um, I'm still not singing and I talk funny so I it's very difficult to to do that so that's what happened to my tongue if you're wondering how's a guy sing one way and talk another that's what's going on this is not normally the way that I talk so with that just uh, so you didn't think you were having an out of body experience while you're listening to that my, I do indeed have some kind of a weird lisp because my tongue is broken and uh, I'm still waiting on it to get fixed I hope it does uh, anyway alright so there you go uh, there's your story about how Sideways became a song and there's also some Patreon content thank you my lovelies for um, for staying with me um, and uh, I love you and I'm grateful for you alright y'all take care Good Lord, 1608. That's a long time. For those of you that stay to the end of that, you're a boss.